Hi everyone, this is Shali Kumar again from Oski Nurse Training Cambridge. I'm an experienced Oski Nurse Trainer for the NMC Oski Exam in UK and also the lead trainer for Oski Nurse Training Cambridge. I am back with another adult NMC Oski video for you today. Uh, so if you like my videos and channel, please press the like button now and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for uh, joining our training and thank you for sending a lot of feedback and thank you for uh, leaving all the lovely reviews you have been leaving on our google advertisement page uh, so thank you for all that um, so today's video so what we're going to do in today's video yeah there has been recently lots and lots of different fails for evaluation station for your SBAR handover uh, so i am going to do a common fails video on that one today so you can use this as your quick revision before your exam okay so it's kind of a quick revision guide obviously to just not to make those mistakes so i'm going to talk through what have been the common mistakes in last six to eight months in SBAR handover and how you can rectify those mistakes so i will give you uh, the common fail but I will also give you uh, a way, uh, a solution for it, so or a tip for it, so that you don't end up making that mistake. So let's look at the top five common fails for evaluation station, which is your SBAR handover using situation, background assessment, and recommendation method for handing over your patient to another clinician, whether a doctor or a nurse. Okay, uh, so you all, uh, so let's get started. So you already know your SBAR handover, which is evaluation station of the API part of the exam is a eight minute station is a verbal station you have to verbally hand over your patient to the next nurse or the doctor using all the paperwork from the previous stations okay so you will have all the paperwork back with you and need to verbally hand over your patient now you're allowed to make some notes if you wish to do so not mandatory but if you wish to do so you are allowed to make some notes but then you need to be careful everything has to be completed whether you make notes or not but everything has to be completed in eight minutes there is no extra time for making notes so that's as per handover just a quick review so let's get straight into the common fails okay the first First one. Uh, failure to verbalize allergy status and reaction so that has been the most common fail absolutely number one uh, in the last few months uh, it's easy to forget uh, but you just need to make sure that you don't forget it because it's part of your it doesn't clearly say in the marking criteria but when you talk about its marking criteria clearly says that you need to say relevant medications and when you're talking about medication or patient history or background then it's obvious that you need to take, talk about their allergy status and reaction okay because it's a patient safety issue so that has been because uh, marking criteria doesn't prompt you i think uh, lots of nurses are forgetting this one so make sure you don't forget because that has been the most top common fail for this station so where do you find this information in lots of paperwork you can find on admission form you can find on mark chart but my tip will be read it from mark chart from page number two so it's on page number two read it from there clearly um, so you need to do that as part of the relevant medication under background part of the handover so when you look at the marking criteria it's under the background part and it asks you to say medication relevant medication it means you need to read the medications from our chart it means start from the page two and read first thing you read is the patient allergy and reaction okay sometimes you say allergy but don't say reaction that would be a critical fail as well so you need to say both allergy status and reaction very 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 clearly okay number two now so again this has been uh, been again a very very common fail uh, to verbalize medication risk factor from our chart um, again this is not something which will you would automatically think especially if your patient has not got any medication risk factors uh, so that's why it has been a lot of fails on this uh, so uh, what i'm talking about is about the page two of the mar chart as you can see on the screen here i have highlighted that section the medication risk factor so when you talk about patient medication 
relevant medication part of the handover and the background section you need to obviously i told you need to say the allergy and the reaction and then the next thing you should say straight away is from the page number two stay on a and just say look at the medication risk factors and say if there is any medication risk factor ticked like on this example there is the patient is diabetic so my thing is even if you, nothing is ticked you should still say I can see here there is no medication risk factor ticked for my patient. If you don't say that, you are not completing your handover completely. So that would be a fail. So if it's ticked, then clearly say what is ticked. If it's not ticked, you still need to say, I can see here there is no medication risk factor ticked for this patient. Okay, so that has been a very, very common fail. Uh, which may come as a surprise to you. You may have not heard about it, but we know because we get a lot of feedback. So that's what it is. Number three, failure to verbalize social history. Now that has been again a very common fail in this station, uh, social history. So this is the background part of your handover where you say the social history. So you top tip is read a from your um overview of patient history form as you can see i've highlighted on your on your screen so is overview of recent history form that tells you about patient social history which you read day in admission station assessment station sorry so you need to use that document again because they have given you everything back from previous station and read that uh, the whole social history okay don't forget to do that because you might think well it's not that relevant but it is uh, anything about background about your patient is relevant so you really do need to read the whole social history from there uh, number four failure to verbalize diagnosis for uh, for admission so why were what was the diagnosis at admission for your patient now you might think well that's obvious one but it isn't because sometimes what happens is in the background you say okay my patient was admitted with shortness of breath but you forget to say what was the diagnosis because there are lots of shortness of breath scenarios in your exam. There is shortness of breath due to pneumonia, there is shortness of breath due to asthma, there is shortness of breath due to chronic heart failure, could be end of life patient. So if you don't clearly say that diagnosis, obviously it's going to be a fail because marking criteria clearly says uh, first point under the background part of the handover, if you look at the marking criteria, it clearly says you need to say the reason for admission and you need to say the diagnosis okay so you may remember to say the reason but if you haven't clearly said the diagnosis it's a critical fail and a lot of people are making that mistake and falling into that trap or sometimes what they say is is confusing because they know the patient is shortness of breath but instead of saying pneumonia but what that's what the reason is they say asthma or something else because that's the scenario they practice at home so just be very very careful there's a lot of shortness of breath scenario it can come in a lot of different diagnoses that you make sure that you say your diagnosis correctly now where would be the diagnosis diagnosis is normally given on your evaluation sheet which they have given you just now before this aspa station and also on the admission form on the patient overview history form so both forms clearly normally say the patient diagnosis so you should be clear on what is the diagnosis of that patient okay so that's important so don't forget that it has been a very common fail uh, number five failure to verbalize nursing needs and interventions under assessment part of the handover so you know in assessment part of the handover you do need to say your patient nursing needs and interventions and that comes from your care plans okay so i don't know why but uh, nurses are forgetting to say that or they're saying it but they're not saying interventions what interventions they have written in their care plans and what they have done for their patient regarding that nursing need so they may say two nursing needs from two care plans and that's say but they are forgetting the marking criteria clearly says nursing needs nursing and medical intervention so you really do need to say all the interventions you have written on your care plan especially the main ones 
so it's definitely like if shortness of breath then how you've been nursing the patient in upright position have you made any referral to a chest physio or anything like that so they're all relevant interventions so you should actually include that and um, nurses have not been completely handing over their care plan, summary of the care plan that's why uh, so you don't need to say aim of the care or evaluation section no just the main nursing need and then the uh, the intervention where you write your nursing interventions i would highly recommend that before starting the aspar handover you make a little summary notes from your care plans because you don't need to say any everything but you need to say main interventions and the nursing need so you make a little summary plan before you start handing over that would really help you in that and the other thing is other thing why they're failing is that sometimes there is a new nursing need given on the evaluation form because your patient condition has changed before they didn't have a lot of pain but now they're back from theater and they are in moderate to severe pain so pain is something new which is like hernia repair when you met them on admission they you are just getting them ready for theater and they're not in any significant pain but when they came back from theater and your evaluation form is telling you that your patient is back from theater and they are in moderate to severe pain now you may not have written a pain care plan for this patient but you do need to make sure you add that into your nursing needs alongside your other two nursing needs from two care plans why because it's really important information because that's how your patient is feeling at the moment and that is patient's very relevant important nursing need if they are in moderate to severe pain i know it wasn't before but it is now and so you may have not written a care plan but you should you need to add that in extra so that's just one example it could happen in a lot of different scenarios where a new nursing need may come up in the evaluation section so when you're reading that evaluation section uh, before starting your handover they let you read the form make sure you're reading it and taking it in that and making sure that there is no nothing new has come up with your patient new nursing need so you do need to add that to your nursing need section of the handover so that has been a very 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 common where new, something new has happened to your patient and you have forgotten to say that you just wrote, uh, read two nursing needs from two care plans so so make sure you are adding that extra one in so uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today so I hope these five common fails which I've been telling you and uh, that's been happening a lot in test centers in from last six to eight months so hopefully now I pointed it out to you so you will not make these mistakes and I've given you the tips where to go and find the information and add it to your verbalization okay so I hope this video is going to help you to do this uh, um, station safely now and not make those mistakes so if you like this video Video, don't forget to press the like button now and subscribe to my channel keep those uh, feedback coming it's really good you can visit us on oskinnerstraining.com and also email us on oskinnerstraining at uh, outlook.com for further information about our online and face-to-face -face training uh, and check out those google reviews i will soon be back with another video for you bye for now